Greetings, gentlemen, and the three and a half ladies who watch this channel. Kamal here once again with yet another very interesting integral. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of log cubed 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x dx. Okay, cool. So how exactly do we evaluate this thing? Well, we're going to invoke a rather aggressive substitution first up. We're going to let... 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x equal u. Yeah, the whole thing. And this is a very useful substitution. It's a very useful transformation because it maps the interval 0 to 1 onto the interval 0 to 1. Also, this kind of function, that is the function phi of x defined by 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x, is actually a self-inverse function. So if you call the left-hand side y, then we have identical relations for x in terms of y and y in terms of x. And let me just show you guys that really quick. It's pretty simple. We just expand using 1 plus x. So we have 1 minus x equal to 1 plus x times u. So that means we have u plus u times x equal to 1 minus x. And this implies that 1 minus u equals ux plus x. And this further implies that x times 1 plus u equals 1 minus u. Of course, this means that x here equals, terribly sorry about that, 1 minus u divided by 1 plus u. So yeah, this is pretty cool because now we can evaluate the differential element or transform the differential element using the good old quotient rule. So this implies that dx equals 1 plus u times negative 1 because of the derivative of 1 minus u minus 1 minus u times 1. So just simplifying things a bit, we have negative 1 minus u minus 1 plus u divided by 1 plus u squared, and I forgot the differential element, du. So we have some cancellation here, and that means dx is now negative 2 du divided by 1 plus u. Terribly sorry about that, this should be a whole thing squared. Okay, cool. And now what about the limits of integration? Well, as x approaches 0, we have u approaching 1 by 1, which is 1. And as x approaches 1, we have u approaching 0 now. So that means the limits of integration are switched. And this implies that the target integral i now equals negative 2 times the integral from 1 to 0, which of course can be written as the negative of the integral from 0 to 1, so you get rid of the extra negative sign. So we have twice the integral from 0 to 1 of what exactly? We had log cubed of 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x, which is of course the u variable now, and we're dividing by 1 plus u squared. And now this integral looks a lot friendlier than the one we started off with. Now to solve this integral, we're going to invoke a series expansion. Recall that we can expand 1 by 1 plus u in terms of the geometric series. That is the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times u to the k, provided that the absolute value of u is less than 1, which is, of course, valid on our interval of integration. However, this is the series expansion for 1 by 1 plus u and not that for 1 by 1 plus u squared. So how do we get that? Well, obviously, we could just square everything, right? Or even better, we could use calculus. We'll differentiate the whole thing with respect to u, thereby giving us negative 1 by 1 plus u squared equal to the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times u to the k uh, wait, it's going to be k times u to the k minus 1. And of course, expanding using negative 1 gives us the reciprocal of 1 plus u squared equal to the sum over... Now, for k equal to 0, this thing will just vanish. So we have the sum now over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times k times u to the k minus 1, and now we can just apply this to our integral. So this implies that the target integral i is now twice the integral from 0 to 1 
of log cube x. I'm going to just change the dummy variable back to x. It doesn't matter what you call it as long as the structure remains intact. So I have log cube x times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times k. No, it's negative 1 to the k minus 1 times k times x to the k minus 1 dx. And this log cube x term is, of course, independent of the index variable k. I'll take it inside the summation operator. So we have twice the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over the non-negative integers, uh, the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times k, can't forget that, times x to the k minus 1 times log cube x dx. We now switch up the order of the integration and summation operators and take the k terms outside of the integral. So we have two times the sum over k of negative one to the k minus one times the integral from zero to one of x to the k minus one times log cube x dx. Now on my last video, I was challenged to solve an integral without invoking the gamma function. And you have no idea how hard I want to gamma this boy over here but I will resist the urge and instead perform integration by parts. I'm pretty sure he was talking, he was referring to solving an integral that's a lot tougher than this one without using the gamma function. But yeah, yeah I think this will suffice for now. I'll see if I can actually avoid the gamma function. But in fact, avoiding it would just mean I'm using a much more tedious approach. Or maybe something even cooler, like contour integration sometimes. It, it's perfectly possible. Anything could happen. That gives me an idea for the next video. Okay, so we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k minus 1 times log cube x. So we're just going to apply integration by parts here. We have i sub k defined as the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k minus 1 times log cube x dx. And on one application, we have x to the k divided by k times log cube x minus 1 by k times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k times the derivative of log cube x would be 3 times log square x. So I have 3 out here. Log square x. And the derivative of log x because of the chain rule is, of course, 1 by x. And that means wait, we have the limits here being 0 and 1, and you can verify that this thing just crashes to 0 in both limits. So that means we have negative 3 by k times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k minus 1 times log square x dx, which is pretty much the same structure. So again, integration by parts, negative 3 by k. For the first term, again, you'll get a 0. So for the next term, plus sign now, times 2 by k times integral 0 to 1 of x to the k minus 1 times log x. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to get. Now, finally, we have negative 3 by k times 2 by k times 1 by k times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k minus 1 dx, which sorts out to negative 6 by k cubed times x to the k divided by k with the limits being 0 and 1. And this implies that i sub k equals negative 6 by k to the fourth power. And now to take this result and plug it back into our target integral. So we have the result for i sub k, meaning that we have 2 times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times k times the result of the integral, which was negative 6, so I have negative 12 outside now, 1 by k to the fourth power, and we have some cancellation taking place, meaning that we have negative 12 times the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k minus 1 divided by k cubed, which we recognize as the Dirichlet eta function evaluated at 3. And we, we can express this in terms of its cousin, the zeta function, 
by invoking the nice functional relationship between them. So we have negative 12 times 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus the argument of the eta function, that's 3, times the Riemann zeta function at 3 in this case. So 1 minus 2 to the negative 2 is 1 minus a quarter, which is 3 quarters. So we have negative 12 times 3 quarters times the zeta function at 3 which is of course Apri's constant. So we have the very nice result that our target integral sorts out to negative nine times Apri's constant zeta three. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do remember to drop me a follow on Instagram. And if you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.